This video is about writing a referral letter for a patient. We will explain about the steps to be taken for writing a referral letter and the importance of this letter. Writing a referral letter for a sick patient typically involves providing essential information about the patient's condition and medical history to another health care provider or specialist. Why do we refer patients? There may be multiple reasons why patients are being referred. The patient may be very sick and a bed is not available for admission or beds are available but resources are not available. For example, operating theater and surgeon may not be available, NICU or ICU may not be available. The patient may wish to be transferred for any reason, even if the patient is dissatisfied at your facility and wants to shift to another facility, it is ethical to provide information about the care the patient has received in your setting. Sometimes patients request transfer for financial reason or because the company they are working for will only support the care if it is in a particular hospital. A referral letter is an extremely important document. At times, doctors refer patients to hospitals and specialists with only verbal instructions. A referral letter allows the receiving doctor to know the patient's problem and attend to the patient's medical needs. It improves the quality of care which will be provided by the receiving health facility. The letter helps to develop trust and confidence of the patient's family in the physician and increases satisfaction in the health system. Letters should contain adequate information and the format of the letter should allow proper retrieval of information. We will follow the SBAR tool that allows healthcare professionals to communicate clearly and efficiently. This SBAR communication tool will be used to format the referral letter. SBAR is an acronym that stands for Situation, Background, Assessment and Recommendation. As part of the communication about the situation, you must ensure the complete information about the referring facility has been communicated. Include the name of the clinic, the hospital, the person who is writing the letter, their title, the address of the clinic, contact information, the time and date at which the referral letter was written, and the time at which the patient was received at your facility. Information is also being provided to the health facility that the patient is being referred to. The name, title, of the person, if the person's name is known to whom the patient is being referred, or you can address the letter to whomever it may concern. The name of the clinic or the hospital and the address. In all types of communication with other healthcare providers, a professional attitude and behavior must be maintained and proper salutation and formal words should be used. As part of the situation information, the patient is introduced by her full name, her age and any relevant identifying information. 
the situation also includes why are you writing this referral letter you will describe the patient's current condition emphasizing the symptoms progression and any recent changes try to be very specific and include relevant details that may help the receiving provider in understanding the situation after completing information about the situation we now move on to the patient's background information this is very relevant and very important information that is passed on to the provider to whom the patient is being referred it will not only contain information about the medical background but also about social issues financial issues or any other issues that have been found to be of importance and that have been discovered in this assessment at the facility it will summarize the patient's relevant medical history including any previous diagnosis treatments surgeries and medications significant health issues and the diagnosis of of the condition that has been made so far if any investigations have been ordered by the facility which has received the patient initially then these should also be communicated and the patient's condition at the time of referral should also be informed as part of the background any documentation that has been made regarding the patient for example recording of vitals blood pressure pulse temperature spo2 investigations that have been made or any invasive investigations or radiological investigations or imaging studies they should all be included it is best if the the, the reports of the investigations are included now we move on to the assessment the referring facility must inform their own assessment of the patient what is the patient's current situation her diagnosis and why is she being referred to the other hospital this will form the setting for at which the uh, the referring hospital will then understand the patient's condition reason for referral and then make further management plans as we close the letter we have to then write down the name of the person who is referring their title any relevant credentials and also write down a greeting at the end to maintain a professional arrangement it is very important and very crucial to maintain patient confidentiality and to adhere to any relevant laws or regulations to maintain patient confidentiality and if there are any such points then we must inform the patient's relatives that you have not included this in the letter and this must be communicated by the patient's relatives or by the patient to the referring hospital so the recommendation of the referral letter obviously is that you are referring the hospital the patient to another facility and you may not give very specific details about the management that should be done because this will be done then by the the hospital that is receiving the patient and they will be following their own protocols and their own policies in terms of management plans 
So this is a format of the SBAR reporting system and a similar format can also be used for designing a referral letter. The referral letter should be on a letterhead and contain the name of the healthcare center, the address, the telephone number, the date, and the time of the referral. It should contain the address to whom the patient is being referred. If it is possible, the doctor's name and designation or a general letter to whomever it may concern. The receiving hospital's title, clinic, name and address. So the situation here will include the patient's condition at the time of referral. How is she being transferred? Is she being transferred in an ambulance? Is she being transferred while she is being ventilated on oxygen? Is she being transferred in her car? Or even sometimes patients will be transferred by the patients themselves and the patient's family themselves on a motorbike. This may happen in situations where the family wants to make haste in terms of transportation or there is complete absence of ambulance services. The patient's background includes how the patient presented, what were the symptoms and signs, where was she transferred from, where was the procedure done, if any, any concerns for the security of the receiving providers or the patient's family, her diagnosis, investigations, treatment administered, treatment of comorbidities. As part of the assessment, what is your assessment of the patient's condition? And the recommendation is the reason for referral, the persons accompanying the patient and the patient's condition at the time of referral. And of course, the name, the signature of the referring doctor, contact information, time and date, including telephone number. A printed form is better for complete information. If you can type the information, then it is the best option to ensure completion and to remove errors due to illegible handwriting. You should retain a copy of the referral letter in the patient's medical file and document the time and the date of the referral. With this, we come to the end of the video. Thank you for watching the video. Do like, subscribe, share and comment. Thank you again.